Well, let's go through the numbers. What exactly are the numbers for doing real estate? A lot of different opinions on this. Um, I'd say that the most important number for me anyway is 65% of after repair value minus repairs. So that means the value of the house, if it was in or property, if it was in perfect condition, um, and then paying 65%. Now, this is in residential. There's some different calculations for doing commercial, multifamily, and that kind of thing. But when it comes to residential, the number is 65%. 65% of ARV minus repairs might sound like you're uh, walking away with 35% profit, but there's some things that you need to keep in mind. If you um, look at the expenses that you're gonna have to pay, there's gonna be holding costs, closing costs. Uh, there's a lot of other uh, expenses here and there that come up that are going to be part of this calculation, but you're looking at about 10 to 12%, maybe even as much as 15% for those numbers. And so once you calculate that in, you're really looking at closer to 20%. Then if you're gonna use a realtor to sell the property, you're looking at another 6%. So now you're down to 14%. Now you can make a little bit better than that, I usually uh, will try to focus on a number around 18%. That way I'm making more than if I were to just use my money and loan it out to someone on a hard money loan. Hard money loans, they range. There's a lot of people now that are offering hard money loans that aren't really hard money. Um, but typically hard money loans are a higher interest rate loan. The reason that they're high interest rate is because they're based on the asset. They're not based on a personal guarantee. They're not based on um, your credit score, they're based solely on the uh, asset and your ability and experience to complete the project. That lowers the risk for the person loaning the money. But I digress. 65% of ARV allows you to be able to go in, pick up the property, to be able to invest what needs to be invested into it, to pay for your holding costs, and to pay a professional to sell that property. I always suggest using a professional to sell your property because all the time that you're using trying to sell that property yourself could be used on trying to find your next deal, trying to add to your team. So making sure that you have the funds that are needed is vital to that. Also, when calculating your numbers, you need to make sure that your repair costs, including paying a professional. Now, even if you are capable and want to do the repairs yourself, nothing wrong with that. Just gotta understand that you're now uh, getting paid not as an investor, but as a person that's doing the repairs or the general contractor. Now, I have a lot of experience as a general contractor and have done literally thousands of jobs for others, hundreds of jobs for myself. And the one thing that's important to me is I still, as an investor, when I'm putting my numbers together, I put together the numbers based on hiring a general contractor. Even though I know I'm more than likely not going to hire a general contractor, I wanna make sure that I'm not biasing the deal based on some skill set that I have and that the deal is actually a deal. Now, the other important part of that is, what if I have a project that I'm working on and then suddenly um, a, a deal pops up that I can make a lot of money also or needs my attention? Then if I've already planned on that deal, having the money in there to pay a general contractor, then it's not a big deal to just go ahead and hire someone to finish out that project. And I'm still making the amount of money that I was planning on making as an investor, not losing anything as an investor. I'm just not making that additional money on top of being an investor as being the general contractor. Also, it allows that if something happens to me, I break a leg, get sick, just don't feel like it, I will be able to have my funds available for my family to be able to complete the project so that they're not stuck, that something doesn't happen and I have to um, sacrifice all of the profit as a investor to be able to go in there and pay for the general contractor. So again, the numbers are 65% of ARV minus repairs. And I like to go in and tell the homeowner exactly what it is that I'm doing. I like to show them the amount of work that needs to be done. I like to show them the actual numbers down on paper. You know, as an example, if I go in and I'm talking to a person that's selling their home, I'm not trying to convince them of anything. What I'm trying to do is I'm trying to show them the reality of what it is their project is, what it's going to require, what it's going to take, and show them the profitability of it. Because you'll find a lot of times that the people that 
you're going in and showing them the numbers, the 65% of ARV minus repairs, show them what the holding costs are and that you're going to walk with somewhere between 14 and let's say 18%, as much as 20%. If you show them the amount of time, energy, imagination, and information that they're going to have to put in it, the amount of effort, the amount of dealing with trades, the amount of dealing with you know, potential buyers, the holding costs, all of the different elements that they're going to have to put into it and show them what you're actually getting paid, you'll find that people that want to deal with that, you're never going to be able to give them enough money to, to walk away from it anyway. And the people that don't want to deal with it, those are the motivated sellers that understand that they just... They don't have the energy, they don't have what it takes, or maybe they don't have the funds to go in and complete that project on their own. So I like to show all my numbers to the person that I'm potentially buying from. Um, there's a lot of different reasons for it, but again, it goes back to that being real, being honest, and having a, a relationship, especially because you don't want someone to, to later figure out you're going to make way more off of it than what they initially thought, and then want to change what it is that they want to do. Um, you know they can back out of the deal even if you have a contract it's it's not fun to have someone change their mind or try to renegotiate it's best to just put everything out on the table let them know exactly what it is that you're doing what your intentions are what you're going to make and then let them make an honest educated decision from the standpoint of, of the person that has that house if they're willing to let it go so that you can make that money you can capture that equity that they aren't willing or able to do the work and put in the time to capture that equity on their own. So again, 65% of ARV after repair value, that's what the property would look like all fixed up, what it would be like if it's comparable to the other higher selling properties in your area, usually within a mile, same neighborhood for sure, you don't want to cross any major streets, but 65% of whatever it is, the, the house that's the most comparable to yours is selling for. 65% of that minus the repair cost, minus what it's going to cost to take to get it from what it is now to that comparable home. So comparable house has granite countertops, has wood floors. What's it going to cost you to put granite countertops in? What's it going to cost you to put in wood floors? Those expenditures need to be accommodated for uh, when you're doing your math. And when you really show people what it is that they have, what it's going to take to get there, most of the time you'll find that the people that are interested in selling are going to sell it to you or they're not going to sell it to you. You being honest and forthright with them is just going to make that process a lot easier, a lot smoother. It's going to make them trust you more and it's going to make it a lot less likely that they're going to try to back out. My name is Jeff. You can check me out on the internet at www www, there's too many W's, World Wide Web at reguideservice.com. Thanks. Talk to you soon.